Hello. Hey, Supriya, guess who? Who? It's Lara. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Obviously, you're showing a fashion east. Maybe you can start a bit yeah. about telling me how that has been. Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, I've shown the last three seasons. Uh, this was actually my last show with them. And how does that um, feel? It feels good. It feels it's gone really quickly. Mm -hmm. I can't really, you know, wrap my head around how mm -hmm. fast things have gone. So, yeah, it's been really good, but quite a roller coaster, I would say. Do you think it feels kind of right to be moving on? Um, I guess so, but I I really enjoyed it with them, and I kind of don't want to leave them either. Yeah. So. <laughs> Not ready to graduate. How has you know showing with Fashion East and working you know. You, sh you show with other designers, so I'm yeah. interested, always interested um, when talking to people who show in that way about whether the people who you show alongside, you know, influence what you're doing or if it makes you look at things in a different way. Um, I don't really think, I mean, I guess the quality, like the, the level of work that's put out by Fashionista, you know, the designers that they show, I think are always it's like a really amazing standard, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's like super good. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it just makes you want to do the best you can because obviously you're showing on, you know, at London Fashion Week. It's it's a big jump up from, you know, an MA show or a BA show or something. I um, So I guess you just, yeah, you just want to elevate the work mm. as much as possible. And is that also partly due to, you know, the advice that you're given as part yeah. of Fashionista and your well, direction? Uh, yeah, we're given, like, a lot of mentoring and, you know, I think... Lulu's always been very much about just like pushing what you're about and just sort of, you know, they're very relaxed about mm. it. They just let you do what feels right. And that's the most, I think that's one of the most important things that I've learned mm. so far is that you've kind of just got to do what, you know, what you feels right all the time. I'm looking specifically at this, um, this show. Tell yeah. me a bit about, you know, your references and what you were thinking about, um, and particularly the colour palette, which was perhaps quite different from, from your previous seasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously this was autumn, winter, 18. Yeah. Um, my references always come from lots of different places, but they generally stem from looking at my heritage and my British I like cultural identity, so like mm -hmm. Asian heritage, British identity. Um but I was looking at sort of a mix of things. I really started by looking through an old fo family photo album. Um, it's a photo of my grandfather wearing a hunting coat, mm. a safari jacket. Um, and I felt like I wanted, I was quite drawn to that. I was mm. quite drawn to that idea of something quite masculine and some sort of utility elements, which then they sort of came through in the collection in terms of not only parts of the color palette, which was like beige and like, dark kind of khaki color uh kind of dark green um but also in a lot of the cut mm. so we looked at deconstructing like this old hunting coat we made it into little jackets shirts and obviously had like utility elements in outerwear as well um and then i have kind of a signature style that i like to drape and kind of wanted to bring that back in that kind of contrast between masculine and feminine again and just sort of bring more of a I don't know I was looking feeling like I wanted to go down a slightly more sportier route with that so some the of the fabrics villa... you've used are quite a lot more sporty but I'm always kind of interested in whether the the draping that you do employ is a direct nod to you know a, a sari yeah. silhouette or whether that's just projected <laughs> No, it is. Well, basically, um, obviously a lot of sari, the sari is one massive piece of fabric that's mm. wrapped and wrapped and wrapped around the body in different ways. And essentially that's how I drape. Like the silhouette that I've worked on over the last two seasons, of the twisted silhouette stemmed from an actual like nightgown that I bought off an Indian market. Mm. And then it's been like reworked each season and it's like the next genesis of it. But basically, I tend to work with one piece of fabric and just sort of twist and drape it, which sounds quite simple. I, in fact, is actually quite complicated mm -hmm. in construction. So, you know, but yeah, it is something that I actually do, do, do. Um, also sort of, you kind of do it in some of the pieces it looks like mm -hmm. there's kind of a modern take on a Savoir Camis, something that... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've worked with stretch. I mean, I guess like I work with certain fabrics a lot, like 
back to the sort of sportier fabrics. I've always liked quite technical or or maybe like more kind of like unattractive lo-fi fabrics, for example, like nylons or plastics mm-hmm. and things like that. I kind of have always been drawn to them and I like contrasting them or elevating them, making them feel quite luxurious. Um, but then, yeah, I've always worked with like power mesh and mesh, mm-hmm. like I always print on it or something. And tell me about these pops of the kind of acid yellow. Yeah, the, the pops of like ravey yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that comes back from personal interests of yeah, mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a party, yeah? Uh-huh. yeah. Um, but I'm always quite drawn to these kind of, I, I mean, I like quite brass, like brush color and like bold color interjected Mm -hmm. I find like color quite I find that when I want to wear color I want something that's going to say something um so even if it's like mixing colors is quite important to me so I guess again it's that contrast of like that idea of being Indian and British at the same time if you get me that sort of somber thing alongside something more bright and popping but making it feel quite modern and contemporary because that's really important to me and I just want to talk a little bit about your casting. Um, yes. Obviously, you know, lots of the models that you do cast reflect that heritage. Um, yeah. Being, you know, some are British and Indian, some are, very, are Indian. But also, there's, it feels like there's a conscious effort that you need to be able to work black models and white models mm-hmm. and all these mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, you're, you're referencing culture, but you're also referencing a sense of mixture and of openness mm-hmm. and diversity. Yeah, I mean, I would. I think that's really nice, and I would hope that that's what people, yeah, would get from that. I feel like it's about being inclusive, and it's important. I think I always have like a woman in mind when I'm designing a collection, whether it's like me, a sense of me, but or an idea of a woman. And we, when I met with Troy this season, who cast my show, we were talking a lot about having a really sort of strong, kind of women who could represent the clothes quite mm-hmm. well and so when we were casting we just were really keen on the girls who we felt like could wear the clothes that way or like you know had that sort of vibe to them mm-hmm. um so, so yeah that's great about, you know, um, the individual than their background well i mean i think it's important to be inclusive and to you know i'm of an ethnic minority i think it's nice to have representation on the runway of course um but, you know, we just, it's quite an organic process. You just, you know, there's so many beautiful, amazing women. So mm. it's just like, he looks great in the outfits and mm. how do they wear it? And I'm interested in this, in this, there's almost a tension between, you know, being a, de- being a young designer and designing something that's so heavily based on your own mm. cultural heritage mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. also, you know, looking to sell to mass markets. Mm-hmm. And with cultural appropriation being, you know, very key yeah it's something that people are talking about i wonder if you're you felt aware or if you feel that there's a tension with that creating you know particularly jewelry is, is something that you work with very much yeah do yeah. you feel that there's a difficulty about creating elements based on something that's culturally traditional to sell to mass to market, mass market. Mm-hmm. yeah i feel like if you were, if i was making traditional indian clothes I maybe would feel, you know, differently about it. But I feel like when you look at my clothes on a rail, if you didn't know, you know, the personal story, they're very, like, I would hope that you would just think of them as, like, really nice clothes. And I don't think they necessarily look derivative of a culture. Mm -hmm. Um, The jewellery is always, like, reworked or reinterpreted, Mm -hmm. especially this season with Hassan, we really kind of tried to take it to the next stage of what we think it should be which is just like modern a modern interpretation of stuff you know of, of different elements different research points you know that come across from things so I mean you know it is tricky but then again that's I'm kind of coming from a really personal place so you know I find it kind of hard to to really answer that in that respect because I, I feel like yeah I'm sort of making these um, clothes and making these pieces they're from like my own background my own experiences mm. but I don't necessarily think that they are like you know traditional 
you know, I don't know. I don't think so. Hard and to... are you thinking about evolution now? Are you thinking, looking towards your next collection? Or... Yeah, I am. I'm kind of focusing a bit on production first because mm -hmm. it's my first season doing that. Mm -hmm. um, How are you but yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's a new, it's a whole different um, kettle of fish. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we'll see um, how it goes, but you okay. know, well, I don't think it's that good easy. Good luck, and thank you very much for speaking to me. No, thank you for for talking to me too. Bye, Bye. Bye.